this session will say that how the efficiency and regulations of a single phase transformer can be calculated from data of some uh, test and also we see the, the separation of the core losses first the last session we have seen the the Sampras test the setup we need two similar transformer they are connected back to back in a such a way that secondary are connected in phase opposition so that the volt meter which is connected for if you are applying any voltage to the primary it has to show the, the zero value so that they are connected phase opposition then only you have to close the switch then you are through the, the auto transformer one of the auto transformer you are exciting the primary windings which are connected in parallel through ammeter wattmeter and a volt meter that is we are connecting the primary they are connected in parallel because i kept this is back to back here it is a primary this is a primary it is a secondary this is a secondary that is the primary side i am choosing as a lv side and uh, the secondary side i am considering as a hv side okay that is the first thing is that make sure that this voltmeter shows a zero for a small application of the voltage in if it is showing the zero then you apply the rated voltage to the, the primary winding and the secondary windings are connected in back to back so that you have to through the other you must add you have to inject the rated current to the, the secondary winding through amp meter watt meter and also you are connecting a volt meter and <coughs> you are applying the voltage v2 so that i2 shows the rated current means it is nothing but in the primary side you are just like you are conducting the open circuit test because the secondary is connected back to back it is act as a back to back therefore you are applying the rated voltage here then the corresponding current what i am getting is that is i naught for the two transformers and w1 reads the error losses in the transformer whereas w2 reads the the total copper loss in the two transformers we will see the calculation part how exactly we are doing the, the experiment is very simple the second of the transformer are connected back to back making sure that whether they are connecting back to back or not by connecting the volt meter here it shows zero then apply the rated voltage to the primary winding which are connected in parallel and in the secondary you have to inject the rated current then the corresponding value of voltmeter, ammeter and wattmeter in, in primary and secondary you have to note that is from the, the data our intention is to find out r naught, x naught, r equivalent, x equivalent which is the equivalent resistance of the transformer referred to the one of the high voltage side because you are connecting, you are injecting the current in high voltage side ok we will see that look into the the bad meter reading that is iron loss i want from the this sampler test you can see here here you are applying the rated voltage secondary is connected back to back this bad meter w1 bad meter reads the the total iron losses in the, the two transformers. Therefore, iron loss per transformer is W1 by 2. At the same time, you are circulating the rated current in the secondary so that <coughs> this watt meter, the W2 watt meter, reads the, the total copper loss in the, the two transformer. Means W2 reads copper loss of the transformer 1 and 2. At the same time, <coughs> You can see the voltage, how much voltage is applied? The voltage is applied across the, the two winding. The voltage, this voltage is applied, it is act as a short circuit, it is act as a short circuit. Then you are applying the voltage to the two winding. Okay. From this, we can calculate, let us see. First, what I want is the iron loss. Iron loss, how I am getting is, it is W1 by 2 because the input you are applying the rated voltage. W1 reads the total iron losses in the transformer 
Therefore, iron was poor transformer of hypergetic W1 by 2 because where the W1 creates the iron loss in the both the transformers. This current I0, I0 means what? The current I0 is nothing but it is I1 by 2. It is I1 by 2. So because this I1 is the, the no load current, it is for the two transformer. Therefore, poor transformer I am interested, therefore, you have to calculate I1 by 2. Therefore, I0 is equal to I1 by 2. Then V0 is a V1 primary voltage applied. Then we know the W0, we know the I0, we know the, the V0, that is the V1 is the primary applied voltage, that is the rated voltage. Therefore, we know W0, I0 and V0, it is just like your OC test of a, a transformer, then you can calculate the value of the power factor under no load condition. Cos Y0 is equal to W0 divided by V0 I0. Once again, W0 is equal to V0 I0 cos Y. That formula I am using to calculate the cos Y0. Once the cos Y0 is known, then you can find out the sign format by finding out the final from cos inverse of cos Y0. Then, then next we have to find out the working component that is I0 cos Y0 and also magnetizing component I0 sin Y0. Then we know that X0 is equal to V0 by magnetized current and resistance R0 is the applied voltage by the working component. That is evident these calculations in our OC test. Means from the component test from the primary side we are getting the W0 that is W1 by 2 and I0 we are getting from I1 by 2 then V0 is the rated applied voltage thereby find out cos Y0, IW, I mu and corresponding R0 and X0 you can calculate. That is the pattern combination of the normal component calculated here R0 and X0. Now the next step is to find out the equivalent resistance and equivalent reactance of the transformer. Here that is a, the W2 gives the total copper loss of the transformer. I told you it is a copper loss of it is a copper loss of the, the two transformer W2. Therefore, what I am interested is for each transformer it is W by 2. The same thing I am using here that is WCFM that is a copper loss at full load per transformer is equal to W2 by 2. Therefore, it is the full load copper loss it is per transformer. It is a copper loss per transformer. Then also we are applying that is a short circuit voltage which is applied to the secondary winding. We are using here two transformer in series in the secondary side. You can look into the, the circuit diagram carefully. Here this voltage is applied to the, the two transformer winding. Here two transformer. Therefore voltage per transformer is it is V2 by 2. Therefore that is Vsc is equal to V2 by to voltage injected per a transformer. Therefore, we know that the total copper loss in the transformer, that is a copper loss per transformer is equal to its equivalent resistance multiplied by the square of the current. Therefore, from that formula that is W is equal to I square R. Therefore, R equivalent how we are calculating? R equivalent is equal to WCFL divided by I2 square. That is I2 we are getting from ISC is equal to I, I2. Okay, because it is a series current, therefore you should not divide here. You should not divide here because current in the both are winding is uh, remain same. ISC is equal to I2. Therefore, R equivalent, which is referred to the HV side because I am injecting the current, rated current in the high voltage side. Therefore, R equivalent uh, resistance referred to the high voltage side is WCFL divided by I2 square. Then you can calculate the impedance Z equivalent is equal to Vsc by Is. That is, it is just like your short circuit test. Vsc is equal to V2 by 2. Already we know Isc is equal to I2. Therefore, you are finding out Z equivalent of the one of the transformer. We know the resistance, equivalent resistance of one of the transformer. Thereby you can calculate the, the reactance the equivalent reactance of one of the transformer is equal to Z equivalent square minus R equivalent square that is under square. Here 
This is how we have to calculate the R equivalent and X equivalent. Once we know the R equivalent and X equivalent, we can calculate the regulation of the transformer by using the formula I2 R over 2 cos phi plus or minus I2 X over 2 sin phi divided by E2, where the plus sign we are using for a lagging power factor, minus sign we are using for the leading power factor. And cos phi is equal to 1 we are using for unity power factor. Then from the sum test, it is possible for us to calculate the efficiency. We have to make use of the same formula for the efficiency. Efficiency is equal to it is x into KVA rating into transistor 3 into cos phi x into s yes, that is a KVA rating of the transformer into transistor 3 that is it is a loading factor, the load power factor into cos phi that what you are getting in the numerator is the output of the transformer here it is also output of the transformer and how we are getting the iron loss iron loss we are getting from the the w1 but here we are calculating per transformer therefore here in this equation you are using w1 by 2 that is wi is nothing but w1 by 2 because w1 reads the iron loss for the two transformer we are calculating efficiency here one of the transformer therefore it is w1 by 2 plus it is the copper loss it is load square that is x square times w by 2 once again here i am making use of w by 2 because w2 reads the copper loss for both the transformer what i am interested is copper loss for a transformer this is how we have to calculate the efficiency of the transformer you from the data of the sampler test now we'll see the how the the core losses are separated we know that the core loss is also called as the magnetic, uh, magnetic losses or also it is called as a constant losses. It is also constant losses. It has got mainly the two component. One is the hysteresis, the another one is the eddy current loss. Then from this the core loss we have the Weber rate, hysteresis loss and eddy current loss. That is our objective of the this particular test. Okay. The sum of hysteresis and eddy current losses they are called as a core losses then both the losses occur within the core that is in these losses they are occurring in the, the magnetic core for a given magnetic circuit any given magnetic circuit with the, the paramagnetic material with the, the volume and the thickness of the the plates are constant because once the machine is fabricated or a transformer is fabricated it is not alter the the dimensions therefore for a given fiber magnetic material and the volume and the thickness then the it is a total constant that is diamonds remains constant the total core loss can be expressed in the following way how exactly that is expressing the core loss can be expressed as it's just this loss plus a decurrent loss then the empirical formula for core loss that is a hysteresis loss is proportional to the the frequency and b um, uh, maximum flux density times 1 point 1.6 times of flux density that is the high stresses and eddy current losses they are proportional to the frequency and the flux density kh and ke are the that is a hysteresis constant and eddy current loss constant kh and ke however they are proportional to the frequency as well as the maximum flux density that is hysteresis losses proportional to frequency as well as the 1.6 times the flux density whereas the eddy current loss is proportional to square of the frequency and square of the maximum flux density it is rather easier to measure the core loss with the help of a wattmeter w by energizing the transform from the solution voltage of known frequency as shown in figure that is how we are calculating the core losses or iron losses just it is an open circuit test on a single phase transform so that whatever you are inputting under the no load condition that gives the, the core losses that is same setup is here that is a transformer with secondary open and in the the primary side I am connecting the ammeter, voltmeter and the wattmeter in separation of all losses what I am using use I am using here variable voltage and variable frequency source here the why I am using that I will explain in the, the next slide that is the setup is 
for separation of iron ore is very simple it is a just like a open circuit test but the voltage what we are applying is the variable voltage with the variable the frequency then our main object is to from the core losses whatever there is a core losses here i want to bifurcate this into hysteresis and eddy current losses how exactly we are doing that one? for that just i am making a preamble in the next um, slide here then what exactly the core loss once again i am writing the same equation here uh, that is hysteresis constant frequency maximum flux density here eddy current constant frequency square and uh, maximum flux density square then ultimately you can concentrate on the first part here it is a hysteresis loss that is proportional to f and maximum flux density time if you are the density if you are keeping constant if the flux density if you are keeping constant and ultimately the hysteresis loss is proportional to only the frequency if you are keeping v max constant then the hysteresis loss is proportional to f similarly if you look into the second part of the the core loss that is eddy current loss that is proportional to f square and maximum flux density square once again if the flux density is a constant then the, the eddy current loss is proportional to the square of the frequency that is hysteresis loss is proportional to f and eddy current loss is proportional to f square in case of the flux density is constant therefore just i will write the equation for a emf equation how we are expressing the emf equation that is v is equal to 4.44 phi max f into n the the phi max can be written in terms of v max into a that is the flux density is nothing but it is a ratio of the flux per unit area flux per unit area therefore phi max can be uh, replaced by v max into a what i mean here is just i am uh, you will look into the this expression that is the cross sectional area is a constant the m is a constant okay then what i make is v max is a constant that just i will write one equation here v is proportional to v max and f because a is constant n is constant and 4.44 is also a constant therefore what i am doing here is uh, i am writing v is equal to v v is proportional to v max into f because a n and 4.44 are constant then i am taking f the other side therefore v by f is proportional to v max v by f proportional to v max then how to make the v max constant you keep v by f ratio constant how to make v max constant you have to make v by f ratio constant therefore i am making here the experiment i am doing here what i am doing here is in the here i am keeping v by s of f ratio constant for different value of v and f making v by f constant i am taking the different set of readings what i mean by that for example i am applying the 50 hertz supply with 200 volts the first reading then what is my v by f ratio 200 by 54 and i am noting down the what is the value of wi then i am calculating what is the value of the w by f similarly keeping four constant i am applying 45 hertz frequency then the voltage of 180 so that 180 by 45 once again four similar for that i am taking a different set of the voltages and the frequency keeping v by f constant i am applying so that what i am getting here is wi that is a core loss can be written as af plus bf square because kh is constant v max is constant here k is constant v max is constant what i am writing is wi is equal to a plus af plus bf therefore if we are transferring to other side what i am getting is a plus bf then i know the value of w by f here i know the value of the f and drawing the curve here and so that i am getting a and i am getting here from the the slope of this i am getting the b 
then so that is just